Is it true that you once spent quite a long time studying Hegel? Yes. I didn't spend time. I wasted time. <laughs> I wasted some of my best years. <clears throat> between the ages of 17 and 22 or 23, something like that. Uh, at the same time, I was, I was studying physics, and I was also trying to understand Hegel, and what is worse, I thought I understood him, mm -hmm. which is, of course, uh, a clear mark that I didn't understand, that most of what he said was nonsense. Now, what Hegel has over the other charlatans, he was a charlatan in my view, but he had one great advantage, and this explains partly his popularity, namely that he dealt with interesting problems, important problems, unlike the other charlatans. Uh, <clears throat> Schopenhauer, as you know, uh, understood that he was a charlatan and said so, but he was no less of a charlatan than Schopenhauer than he, and moreover, uh, he didn't say anything interesting, anything worth discussing. Uh, his ideas were completely crazy, just like the uh, Schelling. Uh, but uh, Hegel uh, uh, did touch on a number of very important problems, and the state of freedom, and even participation, you know. You know once in a while he had some uh, bright ideas. Uh, uh, but not too often. And here, uh, one of his main, uh, the, the, the main, is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, negative points about him is that he inspired the Marxists. He, Marxists adopted from Marx on Hazel, and he said, what is it? They, they said, that, you know, it's just a question of, uh, of Changing uh, his ontology, uh, whatever he thought about ideas, just uh, put uh, matter and uh, material, and that will, that will uh, fix the thing. Well, it's, it's, it's not true. They believe in all these uh, hermetic propositions of cases concerning contradiction and so on. And, and this has prevented, largely prevented, the development of, uh, of uh, Marxist uh, philosophy. Marxist philosophy has remained stagnant for uh, a century and a half. But to think that, uh, <clears throat> you know, in Germany, before the, before the reunification, there were two Hegel societies, one in East Germany and the other in West Germany. And they fought each other, but both of them regarded Hegel as the, the great the might thinker, as Marx called him. And none of them uh, tolerated uh, any, any discussion of Hegel's status. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, I spent, uh, I wasted a lot of time, and what was saved me uh, was the study, my encounter with mathematics and logic. Uh, well, we didn't start logic and physics, of course. <coughs> uh, <coughs> it was about all of a sudden, in the year 52, uh, the two volumes of uh, George Boone's Laws of Thought uh, fell into my hands, just by chance. And in a, in a few days, I realized that they all the entire hanging I was shot of it, and I became an enthusiast of my medical logic. Uh, Boone was a very inter interesting guy. He was uh, mainly self-taught, and he wrote not only, he was not only one of the builders of the uh, world, not a catalogic, he also wrote a fantastic book on the probability calculus in, in 1850 or so, uh, which um, people nowadays, if people were to read that book, they would claim much of the philosophy of probability. 